Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's lesson we're going to be going over the Paragon Mechanical Defrost Timer and explaining exactly how it works. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. In today's lesson, we're gonna be going over the Paragon Mechanical Defrost Timer. Let's begin by going over the components and explaining how they work. Here we have our defrost clock itself, and let's begin by explaining what everything is. So over here, we have these small pins, and these pins are gonna be found along the clock. Here's two examples of them, and this is gonna indicate the start time for our defrost. Next, we have this function right here, and this is our timer. This indicates what is the current time. There's a little arrow pointing, and this is going to be the time of day. Next, we have this small brass pin. This is adjustable, and we can adjust how long the defrost is going to be. And of course, here are all our contacts. Let's get a further understanding of what exactly is going on here. So next time you're in the field, which is an extremely common control, this is the mechanical version. They also have the digital one, and it pretty much works identical. It's just one is digital and one is mechanical. So let's go over and see what exactly is going on here. Over here, you might see some extra pins. Here, there is none. This is actually a clock that I replaced. And if you're interested in watching that video, you will see a link pop up in the top right corner at any moment. So, let's look at this. Time. Right now, it is noon. 12 p.m. If you look at all these little circles, that's where we can put the defrost pins. Right now, it is set to defrost at 4 a.m. So right now, it is noon. It's in the afternoon, 12 p.m as the timer goes at 4 a.m. we're gonna go into defrost and let's look at this copper pin it's set at the 20 so at 4 a.m. we're gonna go into defrost for 20 minutes if we take a look down below here we have all our contacts and this is where the money is you have to understand these contacts but the only way to truly understand because just by looking at it you won't know what's going on. You have to know what each number and letter represents. And the only way we're going to know that is through the wiring diagram. If you open up our control, over here on the inside cover, we have a wiring diagram. Here's our wiring diagram. And these are the key notes to take away from here. Let's start from the beginning. And that's going to be line one and line two. This is going to be our power coming in. This is a 208 to 240 circuit. So there's 120 volts in line one and 120 volts in line two, which together across, if you use your meter, you put one here and one here, you're gonna have 208 to 240. So this is gonna be our line voltage. Line voltage goes to terminal one. And as you can see, one and two, there's a jumper across. So one and two is our line one. Line two is gonna be our N. So N is our second leg of power. The next key thing to take a note of is this right here. This is a symbol for a normally open contact and that's gonna be terminal three. This here is a symbol for a normally closed contact and that's gonna represent terminal four. We also have a X terminal which can be used for other functions. In this case, you can use a pressure switch where we can cycle the system based on pressure. Then over here, if we take a notice, we have T and this is going to be our timer itself. And if you look closely, line voltage goes through and we also have line two going across. So this is a little motor which is our timer, which uses 208 volts. Now when we look at this, there's gonna be a ton of wires, but it's gonna be easier to determine what everything is. Here's our line one, here's our line two, normally open contact, normally closed contact, and your X, you know, it really depends on the installer and how they decided to wire this up. So this is all depending on the installer even these but for the most part it's all gonna be the same 
let's go over this diagram and essentially we're going to go over exactly how this works. So we're going to have a 208 to 240 volt power source and that's going to be line 1 and line 2. So line 1 is going to come in and if we follow this one side is going to go to one side of our timer motor and then the other side of our timer motor is going to go back to N which is essentially line 2. So we have 208 constantly going through that timer so the timer can move. Next we need to understand what could be a possible normally open load and normally closed load. So our normally closed load would be our compressor or our condensing unit indicating we want cooling and our normally open load could be our defrost heater. Let's go over an example of how this may work. So we're going to have line voltage going into our normally closed contact. So power is always going to pass through there. Then we're going to have a thermostat. We're going to have some sort of temperature controller within our normally closed load area. So power is always going to be going through here and then it's going to go into our thermostat and our thermostat will essentially cycle the compressor or condensing unit on and off. So let's say we're calling for cooling, power will go through, pass through our normally closed contacts into our thermostat. If the box is satisfied, our thermostat will hold this out, but if it's not and it's calling for cooling, it's going to allow power to pass through and our normally closed load is our compressor and or condenser, our condensing unit, and that will start that. So time passes by. Let's use the example that we were using. It is now 12 noon. So let's say the time passes by and we get to 4 a.m. Now we're going to go into defrost and the contacts are going to switch. Keep in mind, terminal 3 is our normally open load for our electrical heater. That is not energized. We are not in defrost. So let's say we hit 4 a.m. and once we get there, now our contacts are going to do the opposite of each other. This normally closed contact is going to open. And what that means is going to, it's going to kill the electricity to our condensing unit, which is essentially going to shut off our condensing unit, our compressor, so we can't generate cooling anymore. Then, simultaneously, what happens is that our normally open load will close. So now power will actually go through here, feeding our electrical heater and thus defrosting our evaporator coil, the indoor section. With the example of what we were using, now once we're in defrost, that electrical heater is going to be energized for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, again, we're going to have a shift of contacts. This normally open load, which is close during defrost will open so our, our defrost heater will shut off and then our compressor or condensing unit will start again and it just repeats that process. To the left I have my multimeter. I am using the Fluke 902FC HVAC clamp meter. Definitely an amazing product. Would definitely recommend it to anybody. It is currently on and is set to continuity. This meter reads continuity and resistance at the same time. Continuity is a form of resistance except with an audible sound. So let's go over this time clock and I'm going to show you how these contacts work. So right now, once again, our time is noon. So 3 was our normally open load and 4 is our normally closed. So between line and 4 we should have continuity which will give us an audible sound meaning power is being sent from line voltage to 4 energizing our compressor. Between 1 and 3 we should have no continuity because that is our normally open load which is our defrost heater and it shouldn't be in defrost. Right now it's noon defrost is at 4 a.m. so from 1 and 4 we should have continuity. one and four. We have continuity. 
two, one, and three. Nothing. So normally closed, normally open. Now, keep in mind, as the time goes on, because we always have 208 volts going through our timer, our time is going to pass and the time will elapse. Let me hold this one. What we can do is we can manually bypass this timer by moving it like this. 2,000 years later. So we're getting close to our pin. We set our defrost to 4 a.m. So we're just gonna bypass the time, excuse the shakiness, and listen for the click. Once you hear that click, that's our contacts changing. That means we just went into defrost. Not that click, a large click. Right there. We are now in defrost, and this is supposed to last 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and check continuity. If you notice before, between one and four, right? We had continuity, our normally closed load. But what happened is now that we're in defrost between one and four, it's not sending power to our compressor, so our compressor is off. What's happening now is that it's sending power to three, to our defrost heater. And you can see, well here, we have continuity. So now we're in defrost sending power from line to three. No longer from line to four. We're going through a 20 minute defrost. That is adjustable as well. You could just press down on this pin and move it. Now we have about a 40 minute defrost. So this can be adjusted. Everything is adjustable, which is pretty cool. So now let's say the 40 minutes passes. Let's go ahead and bypass it and listen for a click. Boom. That means our contact switched again. So our defrost heater should be off, right? We shouldn't be sending power from one to three. And now it is sending power from one to four because now we're out of defrost and we want cooling. Our compressor should be energized. And let's test it. From one to three, no more continuity. We're out of defrost. From one to four, we should have continuity. Let's see, maybe I didn't press it enough. Let's see. We should have continuity now. Nope. You see that? We do have resistance there. And I did change this clock, so <laughs> we might be having an issue. But now we should have continuity between one and four to energize our compressor and nothing through here. Actually, if you look at the meter, it actually is doing it. Because if you look between one and three, we have OL. And then between one and four, we have resistance. Not sure why it's not making an audible sound. I might have not just been getting a good contact or it might be my meter itself. Right now we're currently in cooling mode, so we should have continuity between one and four. All right, there you go. Back in cooling. And one and three, we should have nothing because we're not in defrost mode. Let's just, for the sake of the video, try it again. Let's bypass this to where it thinks it's 4 a.m and we're gonna go into defrost. So let's see what happens. Between one and three, no continuity, and one and four, we have continuity. We're gonna hear the big click, right there, and we should be in defrost. Between one and three, we should have continuity now. Mm-hmm, and between one and four, nothing. Let's bypass that so now we should be back in cooling so there should be no continuity here between one and three and now between one and four we should sending power to our compressor and there we have it all right one takeaway from there that you can learn which you could apply in the field is always double check sometimes it could be your meter itself 
tricking you. You might not have your leads plugged in all the way and just things happen. So it's always important to double check. Also, just like it's important to double check to make sure that the power is either on or off. It's always safety first. And you know what they say, measure twice, cut once. For those of you that stuck around this far in the video, thank you so much. And there's gonna be a quick treat for you guys. So what's cool about these Paragon clocks, the mechanical ones, you could actually pull this out and see the guts and see what's actually behind here. So you can actually pull this tab and like lift this thing out of here. So this is all pretty cool to see. This is our timer motor. Here's a little coil for that. And these are our contacts. And if you wanted to, you know, you can manually bypass the timer and you can see how the contacts are touching, which is pretty cool. If we look closely, closely, we can see between here and here, these two are touching. And then between here and here, there's a small gap. So this is going to be our normally closed and this is going to be our normally open. And if you bypass the clock, these rolls will reverse. So pay close attention. Right now, I'm going to bypass the clock. I'm going to try to get this live, so pay close attention. Boom, we just switched. Now this is closed and now there's a small gap there. So the timer will pretty much just play a role in switching these contacts. It's really cool to see. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Don't forget to share this with your friends and colleagues. And I'll catch you all next time.